welcome to my channel. Today we're going to learn about spell casting and the 10 things that you need to know in order to do any spell. So, um, first, spells are like recipes and you can get any cookbook, but if you don't know how to cook, if you don't know the basics, you can't, just like ABC, you can't spell a word if you don't first know your ABCs. So that's what we're learning today. The ABC is a spell casting. So thank you for, again for clicking on this video. And number one, so the first thing that you need to do is have an intention. So what, what kind of spell do you want? Do you want to do a love spell? Do you want to do a money spell? Do you want to do a weight loss spell? What is your intention? That's the very first thing that you need for any spell is an intention. In the seven hermetic principles, all is mind. Everything that ever was started out in the mind. It's all mental. And we have several different mental capacities. We have our conscious thought, and then we have our subconscious thought. We can't control our, our subconscious thought in a way. <laughs> we can if we practice it. Our subconscious dictates our outer reality. We aren't aware of our subconscious, but whatever is in our subconscious is what manifests in the outer realities. So that's the first rule of spell casting. To set an intention. And the intention is to program our subconscious mind in order to allow what we want to come through because all is mental. And number two. So we set an intention. Now we have to decide what higher power we're going to go through. You don't really even need like a deity or a planet, but those are some things that you can use. You can use deities, you can use Jesus, you can use Aphrodite, you can use Zeus, you can use uh, Buddha. They're called ascendant master teachers. You can definitely use those. You can use your ancestors. Um, people that have passed away that you know, you can use. You can use ancestors that you didn't even know existed. You can use planets. I love using planets, that's, that's my thing. I, I get very good results whenever I use planets. And different planets do different things. If you want something to come fast, you'll wanna use Mercury, because Mercury is all about speed. If you want something like a weight loss, if you wanna do weight loss, you want to set your internal fire. So you're going to want to use Mars. Mars is all about fire. And Mars will get your metabolism burning. So that's number two. You need to pick a higher power. You don't really need one because we all have God power within us. The source energy flows and connects everything. It's called the Akashic Records. Uh, source energy, dark energy, you can use dark energy, source energy, in order to manifest. But I don't recommend that for beginners. It, it's very um, high level witchcraft to use dark energy. And basically you're doing what the, so you, when, when you use a deity, when you use um, Jupiter, Saturn, or you use a planet, you're asking that spirit to go into the source, into what created us all, and set your attention, to give your intention there. Well, you can do it yourself. You, it, you get completely in the dark and you say what it is that you want to bring into existence. And you are very confident, there's no question about it, and it's happening. So you don't say, please, oh, well, we'll get into this. This, is, this brings me to number three, how to write a spell. So we've set our attention, 
we decided if we're going to use an ascendant master, a planet, an ancestor, or if we're going to just do it ourselves. So now we have to write our spell. So that's number three. You have to actually write your spell. And this brings me to a really good point. If you buy spells online or from anybody and you have somebody else do the spell for you, it's not going to be very powerful and it's probably not going to even work. If it does, it, it's, it's just, I, I don't recommend it. The more energy you put into your spell, the more you're going to get out of it. Because the whole point of the spell is to program your subconscious mind in order to allow it into existence. With spells, you cannot break natural law. So natural law is collective consciousness. We dictate what is. And you can't break that. Like, I can't do a spell and then start flying around, you know, the town. Because that breaks natural law. You cannot do that. All magic manifests as coincidence. That's how it manifests. So if something if you do a spell and then suddenly something happens, you're like, oh huh, that's that's weird. And I wonder if it was because of the spell or if it just was meant to happen. All magic manifests as a coincidence. That's how it manifests. It's not like Hollywood where you do a little hocus pocus and then boom, it happens two seconds later. It doesn't work like that. It manifests, but it manifests in its own time and as a coincidence. So we're on number three and it's how to write a spell. So you do not write a spell saying, please let me have this or I want this. Because whenever you do that, you're sending out a vibration into the universe. And vibration is a very important part of spell casting. You're sending out a vibration into the universe that you're in lack of. You're in want. You're needing. And how the universe works is like attracts like. So when you do that, like attracts like and you're going to attract more want more need you're not going to be attracting what you desire so when you write a spell i am thin i lose weight easily my metabolism is on fire I'm so happy and i'm so grateful that i can eat whatever i want and still lose weight If you're doing a love spell, Chris loves me. Chris and I are going to get married. I'm so happy and grateful that I have somebody who loves me. I'm so happy and grateful that I'm going to get married. All right, and this leads me to point number four. <laughs> All right, so number four, emotion. You have to have emotion. I did a spell for a job. I did it to Mercury. Mercury is the trickster of the Zodiac. He likes practical jokes, especially when Mercury's in retrograde. So, I laughed. I brought that emotion. <laughs> Isn't that funny, Mercury? I laughed and I laughed and I laughed. It took eight minutes. Eight minutes, Mercury brought what I desired. It. it came about as a coincidence. I got an email. Didn't even apply for this job. And I got offered a job. That's how it works. You got to bring emotion. So a lot of people accidentally uh, curse themselves. Because they'll cry, they bring all this emotion, and they'll say, I'll never get married. Oh, I'm so sad. But you know what you're doing? You're casting a spell. You're bringing all of this emotion. And you're bringing all of this, oh, I'm never going to do this. I'm never going to get that. And you're telling the universe that's what you want, and you're cursing yourself. Don't ever do that. 
catch yourself before you do that because you'll be manifesting more of that especially with that emotion tied behind it you need to have the emotion of gratitude the emotion of happiness jupiter jupiter loves loves he's all about luck and expansion and he's like santa claus he loves this feeling of generosity this feeling of having more than enough so much that they that you can actually give that's what jupiter loves so emotion very very powerful you need to bring emotion to your spells that'll definitely definitely amp it up Think about how you'll feel whenever you lose weight. Think about how you'll feel whenever you get that relationship that you always wanted. Bring that emotion to the table. So that brings me to the fifth point. So we're halfway through. All right, so we have intention. We have our higher power. <clears throat> we wrote our spell and we brought emotion to it. Now we have to figure out some correspondences. And this is where you get like the recipes. That's where you get into folk magic. There's different types of magic. There's folk magic, ceremonial magic. All of it's like a cookbook. It's like a recipe. So you need to correspond things. And to do that, you want Speed. So Mercury is all about speed. So you'll want to use the color orange. Mercury loves orange. Mercury is an air energy. So you're going to want to bring in things that represent the element of air. You're going, if you do Mars, if you want fire, if you want uh, passion, then you're going to want to use reds. You're going to want to use pepper. Whenever you use pepper, it tends to get the fighting side of Mars, the airy side. Um, so whatever you're manifesting could come with some conflict. So I don't really recommend using pepper in your spells. Just, just a thought. You can use coffee for Mars. You can use cocoa. You can use cinnamon. Um, Venus. Venus loves sweet. <laughs> Venus loves apples and Venus loves uh, roses and Venus loves pink and green colors. So that's all corresponding. So you need to make correspondences to whatever higher power that you're using and whatever your intention is. So correspondences. And then that brings us to number six, elements. You have to have some sort of element into in your, your spell work. And that goes along with the correspondences, but it's very, very important that you know your five elements. There's ether, which is the source, the dark energy. And on a pentagram, ether is the very top. It's spirit. All right, and then you have earth energy. You have water energy. And earth and water are both feminine energies. And then you have, which leads us to gender, which is another hermetic principle. And then you have air and you have fire, which are both masculine energies. You need to know your elements and you need to know masculine and feminine. And you can Google it. <laughs> like if you're, when in doubt, just Google. Some really good things to use for correspondences and to bring about elements into your rituals. Incense, candles, um, rice coffee, spices, herbs, uh, colors, correspond colors. Colors contain vibration, and that vibration corresponds to different 
things and you want to bring that vibration in all is vibration So now we're on seven, and seven is you want to get into a trance state. You, you want to, um, once you've corresponded everything and you've made your little spell, you may have used like a recipe online, you're going to want to get into a trance. There's different ways to get into a trance. Uh, you can sway back and forth. And while you're doing that, you say your spell, the words that you wrote. I am a thin person. I am a thin person. I am a thin person. And you sway back and forth and back and forth and back and forth and back and forth until the energy, you feel it. You feel the energy just coming. And then you let the energy rise. And then you send it out. And you let it go into the ether. Another way is walking in circles while saying your intention. I am a thin person. 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 And then whoo, you release it. You can go for a walk if you don't want to walk in circles and just get into a trance where you're totally 100% focused on your intention. You have to get into a trance. So you'll do your correspondences, you'll light your candle, you'll, you'll set your intention and you'll get into a trance. All right. Number eight. You're going to want to, hold on, I was out of focus. <laughs> uh, you're going to want to cleanse your area. There's different ways to cleanse the energy of your area that you're casting the spell. And actually, you should probably do this before actually going into the trance. So you should probably do this first. Um, I messed up. <laughs> yeah, so this should probably be first. You need to cleanse. Uh, you can cleanse with white sage. You can cleanse with salt, iron. So when you cleanse, you want to bring in the element of earth and of Saturn those two elements are what the earth and then the planet Saturn entities spirits are in the ether they're they're out there anything that brings you down to earth is more powerful. When you use iron, you can ground electricity. So ghosts, demons, spirits, they're electricity. They're not physical. So if you touch one with iron or salt or a grounding material, it can't be in the same space. It it kills it. <laughs> it kills it. It defeats it. it. It can't exist. That's how you ground electricity is with iron. Salt. You use iron and salt. Earth elements. Sage. White sage. Palo Santo is really good as well. Uh, iron is the most powerful. Uh, it, I mean, you, iron is the absolute most powerful. Circles bring in Saturn. So nothing can come into a circle. Circles are protected. So nothing can ever come into a circle, especially a circle of salt. Um, nothing's more powerful than a circle of salt. 
So that brings me to number eight. All right, so we've cleansed our space, we got into our trance, and then you have to forget about it. You have to forget about your spell. You can't sit there and just be like, oh my God, when's it gonna happen? When's it gonna happen? Or try to control it and say, okay, this is how it's going to happen, all right? So I, uh, I said I wanna be a thin person, so I'm going to control that and I want my metabolism to be fast and I want this and I want that. It, it doesn't work like that. All magic manifests as coincidence. You gotta let the universe just do its thing. You did your work, now you just gotta relax, forget about it, and let it just be, okay? That's why most spells actually don't work because you sit there and you think oh when's he going to call I did the spell now he needs to call well you're putting too much focus on it and you're not allowing you need to you need to allow let it go have faith and allow and let the universe do it the way that it's going to do it you can't control everything don't be a control freak all right, and that brings us to the very last thing. <laughs> so we're on number 10. So for spell casting, number 10, you're going to want to make sure that the timing is right. It's all about timing you need to look at the moon cycles. When the moon is new, you can bring things in that are new. To bring things in, you'll wanna do all your spells clockwise. That's bringing things in new. If you wanna get rid of something, if you wanna get rid of weight, um, you wanna do it under a full moon. That's a time to get rid of things. And you wanna do everything counterclockwise. If you do something when the moon is in void, it's not going to work. Point blank period, it's not going to work when the moon is in void. Um, so you just wasted your time. So that's the 10, 10 essentials to spell casting. Thank you so much for joining me. If you enjoyed this and you want to see more, please consider subscribing to my channel. Um, if you like this, give me a like. If you want to comment, comment below and share this with all of your friends. Thank you so much for joining me today. My name is Serafina Safi, and I present Enchanted Mirror Tarot.